case of weight gain, and in particular a female weight gain because it allows for the inclusion of more differentials, using our mnemonic old carts will note the onset or when did it start. For location, we want to ask if the weight gain is perhaps located centrally, as we'll see below in Cushing's disease, or in the peripheral as well. To characterize, we want to ask for the amount gained, and we're also going to use our technique or mnemonic of pre, present, and post, as we'll see below, to help guide our line of questioning and treatments tried, such as diets or supplements. Or, if there have been none, we'll be sure to include that in our note to show that we asked. For all cases, we should order a CBC, serum electrolytes, urine HCG, TSH T4, FSH LH, a testosterone A1C, 24-hour cortisol, and a lipid panel. Starting in the pre-column, here we want to be able to rule out any underlying diseases and we'll begin by asking, I would like to review your symptoms to look for possible reversible causes. Is that all right? In pregnancy, our supporting points will include a weight gain with the last menstrual period, typically greater than four weeks ago. We can also see nausea and vomiting and we'll be sure to include for our patient note the A, B, and Cs or amount, blood, and color for any vomitus and a history of recent sexual activity. In a medication side effect, such as from oral contraceptive use or lithium, we'll see a weight gain with a history of OCP or lithium use. In smoking cessation, we'll see a weight gain with nicotine cravings and a history of recent smoking sensation. In hypothyroidism, our supporting points will include weight gain, fatigue, cold intolerance, constipation, oligomenorrhea, dry skin, and hair loss, all findings that we would note on our review of symptoms and, as we'll see in our physical exam coming up, deep tendon refluxes that are slowed. In polycystic ovarian syndrome, we'll see a weight gain, oligomenorrhea, hirsutism, and a deep voice. In diabetes, we'll see a weight gain, polydipsia, polyuria, and a positive family history. In hypercortalism, note how we're keeping the differential here broad, but this can include Cushing's disease, We'll see central weight gain and possibly abdominal stria on the physical exam, peripheral weight loss, moon facies, polyuria, and hypertension noted in the vital signs. In obesity, we'll have a weight gain with a positive family history. And in major depressive disorder, we'll use our mnemonic SIGE caps to note the sleep changes, a decreased interest, a feelings of guilt, decreased energy, decreased concentration, Appetite changes, and in particular, an atypical presentation of depression includes appetite and weight increases, psychomotor agitation or restlessness, or retardation or restfulness, and or suicide ideation. The duration needs to be for two weeks, and the criteria are five out of nine. SIGI caps are only eight, and the ninth criteria includes a depressed mood. A decreased interest or depressed mood have to be one of the nine criteria to make the diagnosis, and we'll add to our workup a PHQ-9 and a Beck depression inventory. In the present column, we want to know what they're doing to manage their current weight gain. So for their diet, what is their typical meal like? How many meals are they having per day? Are they snacking excessively? And if they are, we can respond and ask them if we think they could be able to cut back on these snacks. We'd also like to note their exercise routine. And finally, in the post column, we're after any complications of their current weight gain. This is similar also to a review of symptoms. For example, do we note any knee pain? Also, how has the weight affected you? Here, we'll also screen for comorbid diseases such as diabetes or obstructive sleep apnea. And finally, we're going to offer some counseling. We'll help to tell them to avoid processed foods, white carbs, and encourage exercise. Okay, we'll start our abdominal exam with a hand sanitizer and we want to ask our SP if we have permission to examine you. Okay, we'll start with the hint exam. We'll look into his eyes if we're going to be concerned about, about jaundice in an abdominal case. So we'll make a comment that there's no scleral icterus and look down please. Okay, we'll move on to the oral pharynx. So we'll use a tongue depressor here. The key thing to do is you don't want to add too much pressure for the SP. So just very lightly you can press down and ask them to please stick out your tongue. Okay, and we'll comment that we don't see any uh, lesions will examine his thyroid and so another good tip is to offer a glass of water. Would you like a glass of water? No. Okay, and now we could look to see if there's any visible lesions to the thyroid and we don't see that so we could ask him to swallow and we could do one side at a time. Okay, now please swallow again. Okay, we didn't 
feel any palpable thyroid nodules. With the thyroid, we're going to introduce this mnemonic that we'll see again with the MSK exam, which is MSRP, and a manufacturer suggested retail price. And so this mnemonic will help guide you, along with the thyroid exam, the other components to look or to check for thyroid uh, issues. So we'll start with the M, which is motor. So ask the patient to please make a muscle, and we'll test his motor strength. So he has five out of five flexion and five out of five extension. Okay, with the, after the motor on the upper extremity, we'll do the same thing on the lower extremity. So I'll ask him to please kick out. Okay, good, and now please kick in. Okay, great. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to sensation, the S. There's no real need for sensation, like a neuro exam for the thyroid, but we're used to this opportunity to let it hold as a placeholder for cyanosis and, and delayed cap refill. So we'll go ahead and look at his fingernails and you don't see any cyanosis. And we could press on his fingers and we don't see any delayed cap refill. Okay, next we're gonna go to reflexes reflexes. So we're going to start with the biceps and we'll position our thumb on his biceps tendon and just instruct him to relax. Okay, and we'll see a two plus reflex and we'll do the same thing on his other side. Okay, good. And now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on his uh, lower extremity, his patella. So we'll instruct him to just relax, please. Okay, you should give us an, a reflex. The SPs are trained to give us a good reflex. Okay, there you go. Okay, and now we're going to go on to pulses, and so we'll check the radial pulse, and you could do one at a time, or if you're a little more comfortable, you could do two, and you could comment that it's a two-plus pulse, regular rate and rhythm. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom, so we're going to check his uh, posterior tibial pulse, so we'll, it will be behind the medial malleoli, and we could go ahead and do one at a time, or if you're a little more comfortable, you could do, do two at a time, just comment that it's a uh, two-plus regular rate and rhythm. And now once we're, we're finished down there, it's always a good idea to hand sanitize again, so while he's still sitting up to the cardio exam to get that out of the way. So the best way to do this here is, again, to lower the gown slightly and to ask them to please uh, sit and hold it like this. This will protect them and keep them covered up. We want to verbalize that we don't see any visible lesions in the anterior chest, no visible lesions in the posterior chest. And we'll go ahead and palpate and see if he has any chest tenderness. So please let me know if can do the same thing on the back. Next thing we can do is auscultate for his heart sound, and so we'll use the mnemonic apartment M225A, and we'll listen first in his right intercostal for the aortic, and we'll go over to the left for the pulmonic, and then we'll go to the tricuspid. And now for uh, mitral, if this was a female, a good tip is to ask him to please lift up your left breast. You could comment that we hear an audible S1, S2, regular rate and rhythm. No audible S3s, S4s, or murmurs, rubs, and gallops. Once we completed the cardio, we could transition nicely to the pulm exam while he's still sitting up. And so we could go ahead and percuss. We'll start above his clavicle, comparing left to right. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the back, three spots. We could also rotate again, and we'll start above the clavicle. I'm going to use the bell first. Please take it in the instructions you want to give. So please take a deep breath when you feel my stethoscope. Please take a deep breath in and out. Okay, go pair left to right. Do the same thing on the back now. Okay, now we could verbalize again that there was, it was clear to auscultation, no audible reason. Once we concluded the cardio and pulm exam, we could cover him up again. Now we can instruct him, I'm going to now lie you down to do the abdominal exam, is that all right? Yeah. Okay, so we want to help them down. And you don't want to forget to extend the legs for the uh, leg rest. Now you could rest your legs. For the abdominal exam, they'll have a gown here, and you want to move it up all the way to their pelvic, pelvis, and then you want to ask permission to take it up. We want to do the same step again. We want to first verbalize that we see no visible lesions. And after we completed that, we're going to now listen. We're going to auscultate. First, ask if he has any pain anywhere. OK, now we could verbalize that we heard uh, normal active bowel sounds. And then we'll go ahead and percuss in the four quadrants. Okay, 
and uh, we want to ask them if they have any pain first. You want to avoid those areas. So do you have any pain anywhere? Okay, so we'll start in the lower quadrant here, and we'll do superficial first just with one hand. We could make good eye contact with the, with the SP to see if they have any, any pain or if they wince. Not painful at all? Okay, now we'll do, go ahead and do deep, and for that we could just single. We're going to put one hand on top of the other. Any pain at all? Okay, so no pain. And then to conclude, we want to check hepatomegaly or splenomegaly. So we want to place our hand under his, his liver. You can instruct them to please take a deep breath in. And now as he breathes out, you don't want to feel anything, any liver border below the, the rib cage. So once you feel the rib cage and no, nothing extending further, you can make the comment that there's no hepatomegaly and you could do the same thing on the swing side. So you could please take a deep breath in. Okay, and now breathe out. And then you can feel the lower border of the left rib cage and no organ extending below it. Okay, so now you can cover them up again. And then you want to help them sit up. And then just ask them if they have any questions. And then that will conclude the exam.